Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to another episode of Sapient Thoughts where we discuss theo-philosophical issues, where we respond to those arguments by the detractors of Islam in addition to positing our own arguments for the veracity of Islam. Today inshallah we're going to be talking about a contention which is put forward by some of those detractors namely one that talks about the Noah's Ark narrative. Now obviously we know this narrative is also in the Bible but this specific narrative, or this specific uh, contention, I should say, is leveled directly at the Qur'an. In particular, leveled at uh, chapter 11, verse 40 of the Qur'an, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that bring on it, min kullin zawjaini thnain, from uh, every pair or every kind a pair. From every kind a pair, male and female. So they say it's virtually impossible to fit all the species of the earth all the species, male and female, on this ship. What kind of ship would this be anyway? It's virtually impossible to put all these animals. And when we say pair, I mean, it's saying from every... It's not even saying animals. It's the same in kullin, zawjainithnin. From every kind, or min kullin. Anything that can have a pair, really. Zawjainithnin. Now, do we understand this literalistically? So, the answer to this question is this. The operative words here, min kullin, zawjaini thain, or kull, the word kullu in the Arabic language, which literally means every, in one of the translations of this term, is what is the source of confusion. Because some people read this and have a very literalistic interaction with this word. This word does not only mean, this word kull in the Arabic language, does not only mean every single thing. It can also mean many things. And what is the evidence of this? The evidence of this can be found in the Quran itself. Where in chapter 46 in Surah Al-Ahqaf of the Quran, in verse number 25, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تُدَمِّرُ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ بِأَمْرِ رَبِّهَا That it destroys everything with the command of your Lord. It's talking about a wind. فَأَصْبَحُ لَا يُرَى so they could not be seen except for their places of inhabitation or uh, residence. So in other words, it's not talking about everything because this verse is being very clear that this wind destroyed many types of things. It destroys kulla shayin. Everything, the same words here. Kulla shayin. The word kull is there, meaning every, right? It destroys everything. So nothing of the, them was seen except for their homes. We can't see anything except for their places of residence, yani, their homes. So clearly this is not talking about everything. This wind didn't destroy the universe, the cosmos and this and that. And almost every usuli, uh, this is a branch of Islamic science, it's called usul al-fiqh, which is the principles of jurisprudence. They use this in their tracts and their treatises. The word kul and it's called, it's actually a category of thing called al-am alladhi yurad bihi al-khusus or al-khas that it's something which is general and what is intended from it is a specific thing. So it's a kind of usage of the language which was understood by the scholars of Islam. One of the scholars of Islam, a Suyuti, who died 9-11 after Hijri, he, in fact, wrote a book about this word kul, uh, al kulu ma alayhi tadul. This is the name of the book. And in it, he shows that there are usages of the word kul, which is literalistically translated as every, which cannot mean every single, such that nothing is excluded from that particular genus or circumstance, whatever it is we're talking about, universal, whatever it is we're talking about. And so, with this, I should say one more thing, that... As I started this discussion, a lot of people are taking the Genesis narrative and putting it onto the Qur'an. There are some very many differences. For example, a literal reading, not a literalistic one, but a literal reading of Genesis may take someone who's an evangelical or who takes a literal understanding of the Bible, uh, like Answers in Genesis and those individuals, to the conclusion that the whole world was consumed by flood and that all individuals had to be put on the ship. Or, uh, and animals and everything had to be put on the ship. That is a, a, an interpretation for the Bible. We are under no obligation to believe that it was a worldwide flood, and we are under no obligation to believe that all the 
entire world, animals and species had to be put on the ship for the reasons aforementioned. But I hope with that, the contention is cleared. And with that, I end this episode. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.